lab. So we, in my lab, we bring adolescents and adults into the lab to have a brain scan. We give them some kind of task that involves thinking about other people, their minds, their mental states, their emotions. And one of the findings that we've found several times now, as have other labs around the world, is part of the prefrontal cortex, called medial prefrontal cortex, which is shown in blue on the slide, and it's um, right in the middle of prefrontal cortex, in the, in the uh, midline of your head. This region is more active in adolescents when they make these social decisions and think about other people than it is in adults. And this is actually a meta-analysis of nine different studies in this area from labs around the world, and they all show the same thing, that activity in this medial prefrontal cortex area decreases during the period of adolescence. And we think that might be because adolescents and adults use a different mental approach, a different cognitive strategy to make social decisions. And one way of looking at that is to do behavioral studies, whereby we bring people into the lab and we give them some kind of behavioral task. And I'll just give you another example of the kind of task that we use in my lab. So imagine that you're the participant in one of our experiments. You come to the lab, you see this computerized task. In this task, you see a set of shelves. Now, there are objects on these shelves, on some of them, and you'll notice there's a guy standing behind the set of shelves, and there are some objects that he can't see. They're occluded from his point of view with a kind of gray piece of wood. This is the same set of shelves from his point of view. Notice that there are only some objects that he can see, whereas there are many more objects that you can see. Now, your task is to move objects around. The director standing behind the set of shelves is going to direct you to move objects around. But remember, he's not going to ask you to move objects that he can't see. This introduces a really interesting condition whereby there's a kind of conflict between your perspective and the director's perspective. So imagine he tells you to move the top truck left. There are three trucks there. You're going to instinctively go for the white truck because that's the top truck from your perspective. But then you have to remember, oh, he can't see that truck, so he must mean me to move the blue truck, which is the top truck from his perspective. Now, believe it or not, normal, healthy, intelligent adults like you make errors about 50% of the time on that kind of trial. They move the white truck instead of the blue truck. So we give this kind of task to adolescents and adults, and we also have a control condition where there's no director, and instead we give people a rule. We tell them, OK, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but this time there's no director. Instead, you've got to ignore objects with a dark grey background. You'll see that this is exactly the same condition, only in the no director condition, they just have to remember to apply this somewhat arbitrary rule, whereas in the director condition, they have to remember to take into account the director's perspective in order to guide their ongoing behavior. OK, so if I just show you the percentage errors in a large developmental study we did, this is in a study ranging from age 7 to adulthood, and what you're going to see is the percentage errors in the adult group in both conditions. So the grey is the director condition, and you see that our intelligent adults are making errors about 50% of the time, whereas they make far fewer errors when there's no director present, when they just have to remember that rule of ignoring the grey background. Developmentally, these two conditions develop in exactly the same way between late childhood and mid-adolescence. There is an improvement, in other words, a reduction of errors in both of these trials, in both of these conditions. But it's when you compare the last two groups, the mid-adolescent group and the adult group, where things get really interesting, because there, there is no continued improvement in the no-direct condition. In other words, everything you need to do to, in order to remember the rule and apply it seems to be fully developed by mid-adolescence. Whereas in contrast, if you look at the last two grey bars, there's still a significant improvement in the director condition between mid-adolescence and adulthood. And what this means is that the ability to take into account someone else's perspective in order to guide ongoing behaviour, which is something, by the way, that we do in everyday life all the time, is still developing in mid to late adolescence.